Welcome to lesson two. Let's go ahead and type npm run dev to get this spun up in our terminal. And that should open up right over here at local host 3000. All right, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and add a component somewhere up here. Let's just do it maybe right below here. So let's come inside here into our pages directory and we're gonna look at our index.astro page. Let's go ahead and close down the sidebar. Let's also minimize that terminal. And then let's come right inside, actually maybe how about right here. All right, so we're gonna add a component in right here. So we'll call this like a search widget or something like that. But in order to pull it in, we've got to create it. So inside our components, I'm gonna add a new file and we'll just call this search widget.astro. And for now, let's just do like a paragraph tag that says hi or something like that. And then we'll come over here and replace this with search widget like that. The Astro extension allows you to just import these things automatically and I'll close that tag out. And you can see it's been added right here. If you don't have that, you can come over to extensions. It's this one right here and it's a must have if you're working uh, in Astro. Okay, so with that said, we should see hi and we do. So we've got something started correctly. I'm gonna come over here then and let's actually template this out the way we want it to look. So I'm gonna put this inside of an aside tag since it's kind of a complementary thing to the main content of the homepage. And then inside here, I'm gonna have a form with a class of form just so we can style it a little bit differently for now. Let's now have an action. And inside here, I'm gonna have a couple things. First of all, I'm gonna have a div and this div is going to hold two items. It'll hold a label, which will point to an ID of search that we'll add in a second. And this will say something like search the blog. And then we will have a span. We'll say enter a search term or a phrase to search the blog. All right, so you see it showing up right over here. This is my label and this is that span. Next, outside that div, we're gonna add one more thing and that would be an input. This will be a type of search. The reason I do search is because as you type, you get this little X and you can also hit the escape key and that will clear it as well. So you get that by default. So why not use that? We will make sure that this is required. I'm gonna say that you need to type in at least two characters before you hit enter. And then the max you can type is something like, let's do 24 maybe. Finally, I'm going to give this a name of search. We'll use that name to grab the form data. And then I'll also add an ID of search as well. This ID will point to the label so that these two things are connected. And finally, let's add a placeholder. This will say something like enter a search term. All right, cool. So you see all this showing up right over here. Now let's go ahead and add some styling. And we're gonna do something very similar on the actual search route that we'll create in a future video. So what I wanna do is use this class and I think I'll just globally declare these styles. Usually if I have like a little component like this, I'll actually declare a style tag down here, which scopes these styles to the actual things in the component, the HTML in the component. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my CSS file. I think it's just one global CSS file. And this is by default comes with the blog template. So up above here, we're gonna do a couple of things. First of all, I'm gonna actually declare something on the HTML. You know when you get like a site, let's come over here and actually close this down. You get this like scroll bar right here. And then when it disappears, all the content shifts like that. See how that moves one way or the other? There's actually a new property out called scroll bar gutter. And if you put stable on this on browsers that support it, which is not very many right now, it will minimize that. So in other words, if I come down here, it'll still reserve that space for the scroll bar. And so you don't get that jumping back and forth. So I'm going to add that to everything and it may not work on your browser, but I mean, by default, you're just going to get whatever the default is anyhow. So it's an easy one to add uh, for browsers that support it. Next, I'm going to come into the body and I want to add a min height of 100 VH. Now, the reason I'm doing that is if I come like, let's come over to the about, or how about the blog itself? You see how this is the body right here, and it's only taking up this much of the viewport, so it's kind of stuck to the top. So what I want to do is actually spread out all this middle content right here to take up most of the space, and then just leave the header and the footer to take up the space they need. So to do that, I'm going to do display grid and grid template rows. And here, what I want is auto, and then one FR and auto. If I save it here, automatically you can see that the footer goes to the bottom of the page. This is the main content and the header stays at the top. If I pull this up and you can see even cleaner. So here I've got the body. This is auto. It only takes up the space it needs. This is what takes up most of the space. And then finally, this takes up whatever is left, the auto as well. So just to make it a little bit cleaner so that as we add posts, they add in here and the, the footer isn't moving down as we go. Okay, so that's some basic kind of global styling. Let's also come in here. Uh, let's come right below the body and add something for our form. So we're gonna say form, and I do want this to be display of grid, and so that we can see this, let's go back to the home page. Once I change it to grid, you'll notice that these are each grid children, so they take up kind of the full allotted space, and so we'll change that around in here in just a second. We'll say gap of one rem. Here I'm gonna set a max width, which should also cap that search term to the max width of the form itself. We'll do something like 32 characters. 
And I'll set a border on here. We'll do pick two pixels solid, and then we'll do two, two, two. This is one of the colors that they use on the blog by default, and I'm trying to really do my best to keep CSS to a minimum in this series. Next, let's add a border radius of like 0.5 rem. We'll add a padding of one rem. All right, just two more things I want to add. Let's grab the form and let's grab the label inside of this. And I want to set this font weight to bold and I'll set the font size to two rem. And finally, just to make sure all of our font properties are inherited, let's just grab the input itself, which would be the, the case for any inputs on the entire site. And let's set the font to inherit. You can see now it actually takes in a lot of those properties and uh, makes it a little bit larger as well. All right, so that's the basics of adding a search widget. Now you can see here, if I start to type and I hit enter, the default for any browser is just to submit to the current route and to add on search equals whatever. What we're going to do is actually redirect this based on the submission. So when it submits, we want to redirect to a new route that we're going to call search, and then we'll have our query off the front of that. So something like query or queue, or we could do search or whatever, and then it will be whatever that happens to be. Now, if I do this right now, you're going to see that this does not exist. But in the next video, we're going to set up the redirect, and then finally after that, we'll set up this search route.